Yes, at this time the defense wishes to call J.D. Warren. Uh, at this time, also, may we set up the wealth of use of the demonstrator? You may. And also, just your courtesy to opposing counsel, because we did not have the chance to uh, exhibit our demonstrative pre trial. Uh, can I allow opposing counsel to take a look at it as a courtesy? Yes, sir. Sure. My name is John D. Lorian. That's spelled L-O-R-E-A-N. And what do you do for a living, Mr. Lorian? Well, I'm the owner and chief auditor for a company I started five years ago. We're called Gray Lord Strategies. We consult with police departments, uh, both locally and even up to the national level, the FBI, on proper police technique and proper protocol. Our particular <coughs> area of expertise is undercover operations. How did you get involved in this line of work? Well, previously, I actually worked at the FBI myself in the White Collar Crimes Division. For 25 years, I was both going undercover on cases myself, then a supervising officer. But more importantly, because I have a legal background, a JD and an LLM from Harvard, um, the FBI put me in charge of implementing their new protocols and guidelines. I was actually in charge of implementing the original FBI undercover guidelines. Well, I'd like to talk about those guidelines in a minute, but first, how did you get involved in today's case? So back in May, I received a phone call and I was asked uh, for my company to look into the undercover investigation that led to the arrest of Chase Covington and Avery Bancroft. Uh, this was likely because we previously worked with the Midland State Police Department. We audited their undercover division back in 2014 and made several recommendations for how they could uh, update their protocols. All right. Did you review any evidence in today's case? Yes, I reviewed a lot of evidence. I reviewed the affidavits of Corey Hyde and Mickey Keenan, as well as email correspondences between Keenan, Hyde, and Bancroft and Covington, some text messages between Bancroft and Covington, as well as the expert report of Pasigorsky, and I brushed back up through all of the Midland State Police Department protocols, including the recommendations I made in 2014. And did you use any sort of methods to analyze this evidence? Sure, it's pretty simple. I know the protocols very well, particularly because I helped write them for the department a couple years ago. So I basically compared the actions Mickey Keenan took in his investigation to those of what the proper protocols should have looked like. Okay, and Mr. Lorian, I have to ask, did you apply those methods reliably to the data that you had? Yeah. Of course. And were you able to come to any conclusions in today's case? So I was able to evaluate how well Mickey Keenan followed his department's undercover protocols. I actually brought a diagram with me of what the proper protocol should look like to avoid entrapment. At this time, I ask for the court's permission for the witness to step down and make use of the demonstrator. For sure. What are we looking at? So these are a list of steps that should be taken in order to avoid entrapment in an undercover operation of the caliber of that of the investigation into Chase Covington and Avery Bancroft. Okay, so let's take those one at a time. Can you explain the first? What do you mean when you say proper training? So this is pretty simple. The Department has guidelines on what an undercover operation should look like, how an officer should behave, what they should do to avoid performing illegal actions. And it's important that the officer who goes undercover knows all of these guidelines and the actions they should take while they're undercover before they go undercover. Did Mickey Keenan, the officer in today's case, uh, adhere to that guideline? 
Well, there was no records at all of Mickey Keenan's training of any sort beyond the fact that he graduated from the police department, uh, police academy. I'm sorry. Um, other than that, I tried to speak with his police chief, uh, Francis Kimball, to talk about these matters, and I was denied the request for an interview. So uh, that led me to conclude that Mickey Keenan had most likely not been trained properly, at least not documented. Okay, so let's move on to that second, uh, that, uh, second implication there. What do you mean when you say undercover application? So, for an operation of this caliber, uh, which involved a public official and heavy fiscal circumstances, before an undercover operation even begins, the police department must create an application for that undercover operation. This should include things like the scope of the operation, possible complications, but very importantly, it should include evidence that the person being investigated in some way is likely to um, predispose in some way to commit the crime they're being investigated for. And was there such an application made in today's case? There was none on file where there should have been. Was there any uh, indication made uh, going along with that that uh, Avery Bancroft was predisposed in this case? So, no, partially because there's no application and partially because there was not a documented evidence of any sort. Uh, there was really no evidence that Avery Bancroft had committed past bribery, was committing crimes similar to bribery, or was in any way predisposed at all to commit a bribery. Okay, let's move on to that third uh, thing on your list there. Approval by the DA. What's that? So after the police department writes this application up, it should be approved by the police chief, they would then send it to the district attorney. And the district attorney would read through it, make sure everything was legal, and give her approval before the operation began. And was that kind of approval obtained in today's case? Uh, no. A fact from, aside from there being no application, the district attorney, uh, Ms. Blinka, didn't know about this undercover operation at all until April this year, when um, they requested a warrant. And this was a year and a half after the operation began that the district attorney first found out about it. Okay, so I know that we touched a little bit before on any evidence of predisposition, but can we go into that again, since it's the fourth thing, fourth thing on your list? Just to be clear for the jury. Sure. So, evidence of predisposition, as I said, some sort of evidence that Avery Bancroft would have been likely to commit bribery. <coughs> this is important because in some cases, an officer is allowed to use like a little bit of inducement, suggest subtly, maybe you should commit this crime. They're not allowed to force in any circumstances, but they can suggest committing a crime. But only if there's evidence of predisposition. Without evidence of predisposition, they can't hint at committing a crime at all. Mr. Lorian, did you find any evidence of predisposition in today's case? Through all the documents I reviewed, including the transcripts of conversations, there was none. Okay, so I understand that you didn't find any evidence of predisposition. Um, but can we get to that last thing on your list here, proper field protocol? What's that? So this again is pretty simple, that the officer, when they're actually undercover in the field, they follow the protocols of the department. Um, they don't break laws, things of this nature. Okay, and was proper field protocol adhered to in today's case? Uh, no. Aside from Ms. Keenan's inducement issues, there was also the issue of bringing Corey Hyde on as an informant. Corey Hyde was both lied to and threatened in order for her to become an informant. This is strictly against Thank you, Mr. Warren. Uh, permission for the witness to retake a seat? Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Warren. So, given all five of these things, what conclusions were you able to come to in today's case? Well, based on the 
absolute lack of any evidence that Avery Bancroft was in any way predisposed, predisposed to commit bribery, I was forced to conclude that Ms. Keenan had come up with this bribery scheme and implemented it entirely herself. Thank you, Mr. Wallen. No further questions at this time. Uh, would opposing counsel like me to deconstruct this or leave it up? Yes, opposing counsel would like this. You take it 